Right. Yes. Oh, apparently this thing never quite go off on Facebook. So I'm also welcome again. All right. So once more, welcome to our viewers on Facebook and across the world, across the world, um, YouTube. Welcome. And those on our panel uh, that are joining us on this platform and Zoom. And if you wish to join us on Zoom, I will send the link in the comment box so you can join. All right. Tonight, we we um, are looking at chapter 45. Chapter 45, the fall of Jericho, the fall of Jericho, right? Chapter four. All right, so I'm, I'm going to ask Brother Loxley to read Hebrews 11, verse 30. I'm going to ask Brother Morris Gordon to read Psalm 126, verse 3. And Sister Catherine Miller, you can read Numbers 32, verse 23. Oh, before we read those texts, <laughs> we're going to read Joshua 5, rather, to begin. That's the, the, Joshua 5 is the, 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 um, the, the text where the chapter is based, all right? So we're going to read together. So in, uh, in, in our normal alternate mode, we're going to read verse by verse. So I just want somebody to just pick up as we go along. So... I'll begin. Are you seeing it on your screen? Yes. All right, so I'll, I'll begin. <clears throat> and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld, there, behold, there, was a, there stood a man over against him. Sorry, not seeing this properly. Stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? So he you. said, oh, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And he said, Nay, but as catching of the host of the Lord, um, I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. Joshua did so. Right. This is Joshua 5, 13 to 15. And then we're going to pick up well, then you have chapter 6 and chapter 7. Let's go. So we're, we're reading we're reading the entire chapter six now. All right, let's, let's read the chapter. All right. So you, so you start about you start about fifteen. Come yeah, on, continue. Let's continue. Okay. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. None came in. Quarantine style. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, 
and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. valor. And, ye, and ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou go do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall end up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of their covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, come past the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of rams, horns, passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Somebody go and read, please. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Josh had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day at you shout, then shall he shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew, and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them, but the reward, re reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. On the second day, they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day, they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And, and the, the city, city shall be... Go ahead, and yes, the go city ahead, yes. shall be a... And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein, to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, 
she and all that are with her in the house because she the messengers that we send. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated on, unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people sh shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man <clears throat> and women, <clears throat> young and old and oxen and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied the country, go into the harlot's house and out thence the woman and all that she hath as ye swear unto her. Young and old and oxen and sheep and ass. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver, the gold, the ve and the vessels of brass and of iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel, even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy on Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at the time, saying, Curse be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gate of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Amen. All right. So we're just going to read chapter 6, and we'll discuss the passage in chapter 7. All right, so we move on to another text from the passage. Hebrews 11, verse 30. I'm going to ask Kerry to read this. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Hebrews 11, verse 30. Morris. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Amen. Mr. Catherine. Okay. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. 
Amen. So again, we're reminding everyone who is viewing on Facebook, we are looking at the chapter 45, the fall of Jericho, which is a discussion of uh, Joshua, chapter 5, 13 to 15, and chapter 6 and 7. Right? And of course, this is our Patriarchs and Prophets book reading, review, seminar. And we are having a blessed time. And we hope if this is your first time with us, you will continue by reading the materials that are posted on the Fan of Bible Institute Facebook page. Now, each night we share a character quality that is found in the chapter. And tonight, the character qualities are obedience versus willfulness and humbleness versus pride. Obedience is compliance with God's commands done quickly and cheerfully. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Humility is depending upon God and his will in every decision and letting him and others take the credit for any successes in your life. What a definition. Proverbs 15, verse 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. This is a song for the chapter, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, A Bulwark Never Failing. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal is prevailing. For still our ancient foe, Lord, speak to work us woe. His craft and poor are great, and iron with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. All right, so let's do one verse. Uh, and that's, that's someone was written by the reformer, Martin, Martin. Luther. Now, Martin Luther King now, Martin Luther. You can do your research if you never heard of Martin Luther. So chapter 45, the fall of Jericho. We have just read, um, panelists, the, the chapters, chapter 5, 13 to 15, and chapter 6, the story, the fall of Jericho. We, we left off last night by seeing the children of Israel crossing over Jordan and they, uh, they saw this city. They saw this city. And we did make a comparison with the, the people who were given the task of spying the land. The 12 that spied the land? Yes. Their report um, was, was evil except for two. And we, rem and we reminded that it's only two were sent on this campaign to spy out the land. And these two had a positive report amidst that tall fortress that was in front of them. They did not let that be a distraction. To the power and might of God. And 
So it is. They've gone over because their faith was made whole. And they are now facing that battle, that tall structure of Jericho. When I think of crossing over Jordan, panelists, in, in, we, dis we described as a baptism. Isn't it oftentimes as we are baptized, we face these structures in our life, these, 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 these problems. Sometimes it's tall, like the, tall, the walls of Jericho. Anybody have an experience like that? Anyone? When you just got baptized, you somehow faced a challenge that seemed so 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 bewildering. You know, you, you, you can't you can't imagine defeating a problem. Anybody? I just need. Well, for me, before I baptize, I faced a great difficulty. And right after, well, I remember just before I baptized, many persons were telling me, be careful, because it's not the devil going to be after you. Mm -hmm. And my response was that uh, he has been after me all my life. I don't see why God won't be with me, know that I have taken this, this step in my life, right? And after that, it's like debt just kept coming. Debt upon debt upon debt. And uh, I don't know if probably before baptizing or I would have managed it, but it was my faith in God that brought me through each and every one of those losses. Amen. And those persons who are on Facebook, um, I'm seeing Tracy and Steer. No, no, that's a, that's a friend of mine from school days. Hi, Steve. Hi, Tracy. And yes, if you have your comments, you, you are free to share them also. So here it is. We have entered into the land. And it says here, the Hebrews had entered Canaan, but they had not subdued it. And to human appearance, the struggle to gain possession of the land must be long and difficult. It was inhabited by a powerful race who stood ready to oppose the invasion of their territory. The various tribes were bound together by the fear of a common danger. Their horses and iron battle chariots, their knowledge of the country and their training in war would give them great advantage. Furthermore, the country was guarded by fortresses, cities great and fenced up to heaven. That's what De De Deuteronomy 9 verse 1 says. Only in the assurance of a strength not their own could the Israelites hope for success in the impending conflict. So here, the It was like an impossible task. Mission impossible. Right? They were they they, they, they had this, they had the, the defense. So you know they, when you have a city with defense, they can have the archer, you know, and you have all sorts of but um war strategies that you can be you have an advantage if you have a fortress. But here are the children of Israel who moving by faith towards the city to take the city how would they go about this well it says that one of the strongest fortresses in the land the large and wealthy city of jericho lay just before them but a little distance from their camp at gilgal on the border of a fertile plain abounding with rich and varied productions of the tropics its palaces and temples the abode of luxury and vice, this proud city behind its massive battlements of offered defiance to the God of Israel. 
So here, this was a city that defied God. And here a little more about what took place in the city. Jericho. Jericho was one of the principal seats of idol worship. Being especially just, devoted to a church. Just, just before you... Just before you go, you said something about impossible a while ago, Ryan. Yes, seeing mission, that's mission impossible. Right. Um, the question came to mind, can we safely say that our salvation is an impossible task? Yes. <laughs> it would seem that way. To see that way. Keyword, keyword seemed. That's what he said, seemed. Seem, right. So, uh, are, uh, so is it impossible or is it just like yeah, how when, com when the Israelites matched themselves against Jericho, it was impossible? Do our redemption when we match ourselves against being redeemed, is it a similarly impossible? Yes, because we, can't, we cannot save ourselves. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I particularly wanted to also highlight that because when, when, it, when, when we have that picture of our redemption, it will, many persons today are of the impression that they can turn away from sin at, at, at a more convenient time. And so they are saying, okay, this is not time for me to, I don't ready yet. I don't want to come in and turn back. So they're, they're waiting for a convenient time, not knowing that that can't be because their their redemption, their salvation from sin is an impossible task, not done by them, but by God. Amen. So today, if you hear my voice, hard not your heart, not that you are going to do it, but today, God is saying, I can do the impossible in your life. Yes. But, but you know, Loxley, right? Um, that is what uh, Christ, God has been trying to do, right? He sent his, he sent his son. We couldn't do it ourselves, but God in his love sent his son that through his son, we might be saved. Amen. So, so indeed, you're, indeed. So you're saying, gentlemen, it is possible through Christ. Yes. Right, but impossible to us. Impossible to us. Right. Are you, 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 I mean, do you agree or do it seem? No, man, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm total agreement. Okay. Jericho, it says, was one of the principal seats of idol worship. Being especially devoted to Atrot, the goddess of the moon. Here centered all that was vilest and most degrading in the religion of the Canaanites. The people of Israel, in whose minds were fresh the fearful results of their sin at Beth Peor, could look upon this Eden city only with disgust and horror. Idol worship. So, God is. You remember, we spoke about in a previous chapter that all these different nations had some time of probation that God had given to them. Remind me of the city that their probation was closed. Solomon Gomorrah. 
Yes, Solomon Gomorrah. But I'm talking in this this journey with his um the Israelites in the wilderness. There was a particular city that God gave to the Israelites because their probation, their sins, it says, was rise always to the heaven. Um, the Amalekites? Amalekites. Amalekites. All right. Amalekites. You know, you know, Ryan, is saying that. What was, all right, as a person not being a Christian, right? Why should the Israelites be attacking these people and destroying them? Why should Israel be attacking yeah. these people? First of all, God is the one reigning judgment on these people. He uses Israel as his tool of judgment. So sometimes it is easy to say, all right, why Israel is doing this? You know, it's a, God is a biased God. But God actually gave all his nations an opportunity to turn from their wicked ways. You see, when the Israelites went through the Red Sea, that was a testimony to all of these nations that the God of Israel is the true and living God. I remember now, all of these nations that, that are scattered abroad now came from Shem, Ham, and Japheth which came out of the ark. So they were once exposed to the light. You get a picture? Mm -hmm. the, 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 so their ancestors had some knowledge of God, but they turned from God. So no matter how you see some nations, we even know where we see different religious groups. Uh, give me Give me an example. The, 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 the more the Muslims, Buddha, all of these different religions. There was some point in their history that they, their ancestors worshipped the true and living God. Or oh, turned away their... from the true and living God. Pardon me? Or turned away. <laughs> From the true and living God. So are their probation close? Like the well. having 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 that background, that heritage, would we say their probation has been closed? Well, I can say that their probation have been closed. Um, we see in a previous chapter also where it was the Edom, the, the children of Edom, the Edomites. God says, do not touch those people because their probation has not been closed. Although they were idol worshippers, their probation was not yet closed. So it is possible that the probation is not closed as yet. Moreover, Look in these last days, God is not judging particular city, but individuals, as we are now living in the time of the judgment. Right? So God is, he, he, he is using, I believe, the Western world to be his arm of truth to some of these heathen nations. That's what that's just my understanding of Bible prophecy and the scripture on that matter. Um, two reasons. Go ahead, 
Loxley and then Amaris. Well, I just wanted to say, are we, have we, is the, was the Jericho people or the probation close? It would seem that way. It would seem that way. But what but about Rahab? Rahab, was her probation closed? All right. The children of Solomon Gomorrah, if you remember the story, mm -hmm. the angels were going in to judge the city. I remember that, remember this, this, this sequence? The angels goes in to see what is happening. Abraham pleaded and said, if the, is, is there two, um, 50 righteous, 10 righteous, and they go all the way down. So there's an investigation that is going on. I believe this is the same process. The Lord sent the, the spies in to investigate. You see the investigation? There's an investigation. And I think yesterday, they, they, they sent a report. But that report came from Rahab, saying that there, there's a fear for the God of Israel. So, so Rahab, based on her understanding of God, gave a report that would give some light in her character, right? And some belief that would make her whole. And, and, and hence, she was saved because of her faith. And she acted in the faith. She did not stalk it. She hid them. She could have turned them over, but she hid them because she believed in the God of Israel. But she lied. <laughs> Remember? Yes. Uh, and God and, and God destroys liars. So what? how can you reconcile her lying and God's judge and her and God's judgment? That's a good point. I don't know if anybody and, uh, on Facebook learn have a response to that. I'm looking for a response. But go ahead, Luxy. Okay, uh, so she, before I um, tackle Morris's question, on the matter of probation, we get, we're getting the impression from the onset that this city is doomed. Therefore, the probation, their probation is closed. However, Rahab comes out and anybody who came into her household was spared. Just like Lot and, and his family. Just like, just like Lot and his family, just like right. Noah and right. his family. Right. Um, also, at, on top of all of that, the Israelites circuit the walls of Jericho seven days, seven times on the seventh day. And they all were looking out and reporting what they saw. Yes. What does it mean probation is closed when they have the, what appears, a grand opportunity to come out and, and ask? Because they were asking the questions the, as, the, as reading, um, the, uh, as, as, as we have read. They could have come out and said, what are you doing? Why are you guys marching around? You know, they could have come out and make inquiries and be brought closer to the reality of the Hebrews God, the Hebrew God, which they know already has demonstrated himself as the only true God, but they didn't. So when we look at probation closing, are we to understand probation closing in term not that God withdraws hmm. his love, but that the heart no longer responds to his 
um, abundant love? Is that an accurate picture of, 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 of the probation relationship? Hebrews says, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. But if you, you hear your voice, if you hear the, Lord, the voice of the Lord and you harden your heart, what you're infectiously doing, you are closing the path of salvation on yourself. On yourself. And so probation. That, so you, mm -hmm. when, you, when you close that door for, to be saved, that is, a, that, is, that is a close of probation for you. Yeah. So probation closing is not that God stopped calling. No. It's just that you no longer respond. You no longer respond. And God asks. God gives time. And there's a time where he, he said, there's no more time. Wait, wait, let me get this right. Is, 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 it, is it God who stops calling or is it we that cease to respond to his calling? Right. Which, one, which, one, which, one, which one can we safely say truly demonstrates um, probation closing in light of who God is? In light of who God is. Anybody here wants to respond to that? But as you said last day now, God always calls. And with all of the stories that we have discussed in past chapters, the time of Noah, he said 120 years and then he's going to act. Right. And, and it is good for us to come to that understanding of probation because many persons um, are finding it hard to reconcile a God of mercy and a God that cuts off um, mercy. But it is important for all to understand that God mercies, the streams of mercy never ceases. However, because we are finite, we will cease if we don't respond to it. Um, it is similarly to all, even to our body works. There's a time when the medicine can recover um, sickness that is in our being or whatever condition we face our, our, our bodies. But there's a time when it, is, it, is, it goes beyond. It's, it's out of our reach. And that is true for our hearts too. So that is why the admonition is, if you hear my voice, hard not your heart. In other words, I want my friends to understand that. Listen, God never cease. God's mercy never cease. But you are finite. There's going to come a time when you will not be able to respond to his abundant mercy. And that is why I'm pleading to you on Facebook. Don't think you have tomorrow. Songwriter says tomorrow may be too late. It's just how we are made. Is it in, in, even in our relationships, nobody keeps um, pursuing a lover forever. There's a time when it just no care what you do for that person, the person has to just lock you off. And that is how we are. God is infinite. His mercy never ceases, but we are finite. Our response are li limited. And that is why I'm asking my friends, if you hear God's voice, turn to him today. Amen. So, here it is. The city continued in their defiance. 
they mocked, they jeered. They cared nothing about the worship of God and the things of God. Um, it says here, in obedience to the divine command, Joshua marshaled the armies of Israel. No assault was to be made. They were simply to make the circuit of the city, bearing the ark of God and blowing upon trumpets. Why do you think God used this method to defeat Jericho? By just marching. The reading. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Now, I was saying the reading pointed out that the marching wasn't only for the Jerichoites, but was also for the Israelites, for their faith to grow, for them to understand how the taking of Canaan is really going to go. Um, it's just by faith, um, not by not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. So for six days, the host of Israel made the circuit of the circuit, the circuit of the city. The seventh day came, and with the first dawn of flight, Joshua marshaled the armies of the Lord. Now they were directed to march seven times around Jericho. And at a mighty peal from the trumpets, they shout with a loud voice, for God had given them the city. When I think of this way now, God, just like at the time of, I think it's, it's exactly the, the same working like the, the Red Sea. The glory must be given to God. It must be seen on the children of Israel, that the battle is not theirs, but the Lord's. It must be seen in Israel, in Christians today, that we fight not against flesh and blood, but by, but by principalities and powers. Right? God is the one who fights for us. All he asks us to do is to march and give a shout to walk by faith and declare the word of God. That is what I get from this story. Walk by faith and declare the word of God. The walk is a complete walk. It's, it, it's there are seven days they walk one. You know what that mean? You know, walk with Christ. Daily. Daily we walk. Seven is just a symbolic number, but it's a daily walk with God. And as the closer we draw, to the end, the walk becomes even more intense. As he said, seven times on the seventh day, they had to walk. So it is, we are in this Christian journey. And there will come a time that everything that we have been learning and practicing in our Christian life, will be needed or the faith that you have built will be expressed in one time period. 
that 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 is how I see the I, I'm just looking at the scenario and matching it up with the the, the the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon us. You know? That seven you see that seven times in the last day. That is almost impossible, you know? that's an impossible task. But what? God gave them that extra oil to move. That extra strength. I don't know if you see the picture I'm, I'm, I'm painting. So that, that, that final power before we are victorious in this life. God is giving us extra oil that we need. And that's what the children of Israel had. They had seven times they had to march on the seventh day. All right, anybody else with a point? And Brother Morris, I saw your hand. Go ahead. All right, um, yep. All right. All right. Go ahead. I hear the now. act of walking, there's two things. Yeah. We have the act of walking, which is like, having faith in, yes. in, in God, right? Now, we as Christians, we have, to, we have to act in faith. We know that it may seem impossible, but if we have that faith in God, we shall, we shall receive. Also, um, this seven, Right, the any 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 time you hear about seven, yes, complete. it should remind you of what God's sacredness, God's Sabbath, perfection, yeah, perfection, right? Um, also entailed in this, it says on the seventh day, what happened? It was like a double blessing. They had to walk how many times each day they walked once around but when it came to the seventh day how many times did they walk around seven times so there is a significance with with, with that seven and in the last days we know that it will be the seventh day that will be a problem that will cause the second coming of jesus christ Yes, they got some deep waters, I know. Yeah, but it's there. It's, it's there. So when people try to hide about the Sabbath we've done away with, God is using his words to show the significance of this, of, of seven. Amen. Wait a minute. So, so, so. The trumpet, what's the significance of the blowing of that trumpet that got the walls tumbling down? The same thing hit me that the trumpets could be the trumpet of, of the gospel, the trumpet of um, blowing the trumpet of the gospel. And it said, lift up the trumpet and low, let it ring. Jesus is um, coming again. Jesus is coming again. So I, I see the trumpets as I notice they were not talking. They were walking and blowing the trumpets, you know, signifying a, a, a life and, and a voice of only the gospel. Not, they're not doing their own words. That's what came to my mind. Yes, I'm here reading that it says, All was silent. Do we learn to be silent sometime? And let's let the trumpet sound. It says, all was silent, save the measured tread of many feet and the occasional sound of the trumpet, breaking the stillness of the early morning. 
So the master so they march early in the morning. The massive walls of solid stone seem to defy the siege of men. The watchers on the walls look on with rising fear as the first circuit ended. They followed a second, then a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. What could be the object of these mysterious movements? What mighty event was impending? It's the same curiosity that was expressed in the people during our time. What is he doing? What is he building his ark? This seems to be something about a disconnect with the world and the way in how God models the plan of salvation. Romans says, the wisdom of God is foolishness to man. They probably thought, what kind of foolishness these people are doing? <laughs> you see? <laughs> yeah. What kind of foolishness? <laughs> what kind of foolishness? It, 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 to me, it, it made no sense. Yeah. Just get up a walk and a shout. Yeah. Not, not no, they're not shouting. shouting. No, they're blowing trumpet. Just walking blowing. and blowing trumpet. Mm. Little did they know that is our God. How is how are we to walk and blow the trumpet now? How do we do that now? And how is the world looking on us doing that? I asked myself that question. In, even, in, even when we consider COVID um, response, mm. the, the protocols that are being instilled for our, for the, to, to, to mitigate against the spread. Again, the question is asking, what happened to the gospel of God healing his people? You know, where's that trumpet sound? That, that unusual, what seems to man as non-scientific, um, you know? Define. You know, um, you know, where, where is it? The, the odds. Define the odds. Right. Mm -hmm. But did you know that um, they've been using Bible principles when it comes to quarantine? Also. And it, you know. Explain that better, Barry. Um, all right. When, all right, for instance, um, I think uh, Miriam, when she had leprosy, she yeah. was um, quarantined from the camp. Or if anybody um, had leprosy, they were quarantined from the camp or any disease. So li likewise, this concept of quarantine um, during this crisis, it's really a biblical. It's really, it's really a biblical concept. Yes. Oh. Um, well, what is, what is what is what is biblical, Morris? Yeah. No, the, the idea of um, quarantine. Do you quarantine sick people or healthy people? Uh, sick people. Precisely. <laughs> so that is biblical. It's not locking yeah. down healthy people. Well, you, you keep in a way. Sick people away from yes. So that is biblical. So let, let's not mix it up. Not because it's popular practice now for everybody mm -hmm. to be on lockdown. Um, that's not the biblical um, narrative that's there. Is the, is the sick person who is taken away from the camp and quarantined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we are talking about, we're not, we're not talking about that um, this, the, the, the sickness, we're talking about the healing 
So yes, there is a, a virus that, that makes people sick. Mm -hmm. what, are, what, is, oh, what should be our response? Should our response be as it is now? What happened, what happened to the protocols of PER? Okay. Look, um, we were, were being brought to um, Joshua's experience. Joshua spread out with the elders before the altar. And Lord said, get up. I'm going to find a sin in the camp. That is why you lost. I believe so, a similar rebuke is coming to us. Okay. We, we so, have to get up and identify mm -hmm. the, the cherished sin that has caused us to crumble under attack. This is an attack from the enemy, you know, mm -hmm. as it described an invisible enemy, enemy um, to us, this disease. But God, I believe that we should get up and identify the sin that has caused us, that has separated us from the heal of our diseases. Mm -hmm. I hear nobody talking about the miracle of healing. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I've heard is somebody say, it is not God who do this. So God is being reproached because they're saying we always hear for God of miracles. Mm -hmm. But this time around, are we do it in? So, mm -hmm. see, so we need to get right, arise and shine. And looking deeper, right? I don't want to really go into it, but in looking deeper, is it that um, people will realize that there's something wrong and they will take this and say, you know what? We have, uh, we have broken the commandments of God. And since we've broken the commandments of God, uh, we need to come back to God. Hmm. So it, it could be a wake up call, not only for us as, you know, as Christians, but also the world. And we know where that will lead to. You know, when the call comes that, look, where is God? Right. Uh, it's because we have we have sinned. Why you no? Know, why we have these diseases? So you know what? We must go back to God. Right? We must. You no, know, we must. We, you know, we we have broken His Sabbath. Right? It, because it was a Sabbath that um, caused the children of Israel to go into into captivity. Now they will call and say their Sabbath is not the Sabbath of the Lord, <laughs> right? But it is the first day of the week. You get, you get, you, you get the drift. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be somewhat very careful of what, of, of, of what, of, of what is really happening. Also, Ryan, I just what wanted to bring up the text, the search of the text, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 19, um, about the wisdom of the world. Uh, you, you quoted it earlier, but yeah, yes, yes. Um, I think um, just want to highlight that text so that we, we get it right. Okay, and I'm welcome, Brother Dwight Fraser. <laughs> Wisdom of the world. Yes, sorry. Oh, Holly, it takes on the screen from before. You want to talk about the other time when you are ignorant? God don't judge at that time. By the time of ignorance, God winks. When God talks to you, he asks us to repent. All right. So Romans, um, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he take it the wise in their own craftiness. 
And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. And then another text that speaks about it. All right. Right, right, Ryan. So I wanted to highlight that is the wisdom of the world that is foolishness with God. Early, earlier on, we had said it the other way around. What, what, what did we say? The wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. It's not the same. The wisdom. The Bible says that too, you know. Wait, which one? I think it's in Romans. The wisdom of... Well, uh, this is the one I found. So I was just... I was just... I'm letting, highlighting that. Okay, okay. I believe there's, there's one speak of. All right. All right. Let us continue. It may be correct. Now it says. Next question. So who brought down the walls of Jericho? Who brought it down? Was it, was it the effort God. of men? Or was it the effort yeah. of God? You mean effort of God? Is there any effort? It was a faith in him and through them he acted. So right. God brought it down. So was it just God? So God brought it down. Man had no part in in in, in faith. You know. Through many, you should see their faith. But it was the actual angels that brought it down. Angels, yes. Bring us in the reading. Yes, I'm going to go to it. What, what what I want to get at though, and if and this is something that God has been doing. He tells us to go ye therefore and to teach all nations. Yet and no. He says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. But yet he tells man to go and teach the world. How do you relate that with the story of the walls coming down? Any connections? I know that's where I'm going. All right. Let me, let me probably just go ahead. God in his wisdom involves different groups of his creation or different levels of his creation in the salvation of man. Angels are involved, humans are involved. What is God is the source of the strength. He is the one who is given the glory. He allowed men to make a shout. He didn't have to allow them to make a shout. He could have made them march and it just dropped. But that shout was an act of their faith in God. And their partnership in bringing down the thought. So God uses us um, as his workmen 
in the gospel. But we have to submit and we have to move by faith and do our part. And what God does, he works through mankind in breaking down problems in the world. To, to, in, in, even in evangelizing this world, he involves mankind, which is a blessing and a tool and a lesson to us. You know, Ryan, yeah, um, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, um, how God works, yeah. right? We think that, okay, God acts. Yes, God can act on his own, but he works through. All right, in Revelation chapter 1, could you read that? Verse 1. says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto yeah. his servants through servants things which must surely shortly come to pass and he sent and signified by his angel on his servants john so we see here how god communicates right it, it communicates through jesus and then um he uses his angels and his angels use um the prophets or the or the servants Mm -hmm. So li likewise, when the walls of uh, Jericho were, um, were breaking down, yeah, yes. right? God used the, uh, it, it looks like it, it was just yeah. the, the men who were working, right? But it wasn't. It was the angels. Yes. Or we can have Joshua, right? Joshua gave the command. Yeah. And, um, well, the command came from Jesus, from God to Jesus, to Joshua, to the people, and to the angels. Yeah. So there is an, an involved, with, so, so when we, so we as Christians must recognize the high calling that we have. We are not enough champion people when we are used by God and we're in partnership with God in the work of salvation plan of salvation we can be a part of the plan that is what God wants us to know he wants us to be a part of the plan he goes as far as to say listen you're going to know not know you not that you're going to judge angels Hmm? No, you're not going to even judge angels. Imagine we are judging angels. So, yeah. That is 1 Corinthians 6, 3 to 5. 1 Corinthians 6, 3 to 5. Know ye not that we shall judge angels or much more things that pertain to this life? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So God involves us in the judgment. You remember earlier what said? Was it he said, Jericho this, um, was destroyed by the Israelites. It was stealing a table. But God used this man to, to, to bring forth this judgment. And it is a model of how it will be done in the, in the, in the last days. We will be judging a part of the executive Investing the millennial judgment. Very, very important. Very, very important for us to know. All right, so we are next 15 minutes, we'll be out up here. Well, the story moves on to 
another point. Speaks of Akon. Remember, you can tell me who was Akon? Who is Akon? Kerry? Yes. Remember who was Akon? Not remembering the name. Son of can't remember. Alright, all right. no problem, no problem. Alright, so I'm going to put it on the screen. Yeah, the son of Akon, the son of Carm or Carmai of the tribe of Judah. Right. <clears throat> Sorry. What did he do? <laughs> what did he can do? A good day. He saw a goodly Babylonian garment. All right. Remember earlier, it says that they should not touch the or keep the accursed thing in the camp. Well, Achan, as we're going to see, was disobedient. Of the millions of Israel, there was but one man who in that solemn hour of triumph and of judgment had dared to transgress the command of God. One man. Achan's covetousness was excited by the sight of that costly robe of Shinar. Even when it had brought him face to face with death, he called it a goodly Babylonish garment. How can, the, how can we look at the Babylonian garment and call it good? That's what strikes me. Yeah. In Israel, an Israelite is looking at Babylon's garment and calls it good. Yeah, but you know what? He stole the tithe. Because what happened was that the command was, look, you must destroy everything. Um, mm -hmm. You must give everything to me. But Achan right seeing this uh, some treasures or whatever right it says a, a goodly babylonian garment right which should have been given to the lord the lord says look this is mine but being covetous being covetous he said you know what i want it so in fact what he was doing he was stealing the tide Mm. Right in six nineteen, Joshua six nineteen, just put up again what um what the garden is saying. All right. Or you can start from six eighteen to nineteen. Because real that's what I was seeing it as a tie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tithe. Okay. Joshua six verse nineteen. Um, But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury. So where did he get it from? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It says, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed things. Cursed things. Lest ye make yourselves accursed. That garment is an accursed thing. Why was it accursed? 
or was it was, or was it was it as um a tr in those way in the treasure of the Lord? Yeah. You think so? That's it where the tide it, come up. Yeah. So he so he he took the Lord's tide, right? So and taking the Lord's tide, he was a curse. And not only him was was he was he a curse, but also Israel, because it was a command given to Israel. So through one man's sin, Israel failed. Oh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing what you're saying now. Have you read? Yeah. Joshua 6, 18 says, and ye in any wise keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. If you read it, the chapter, the verse before it says, and the city shall be accursed. Even it and all that they're in to the Lord. So everything in the city was accursed. Even the silver and gold they talk about in verse 19. They are cursed. But the Lord was to receive the curse. In other words, but verse nine, that is a very interesting. <laughs> but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. The plan of salvation, look very carefully in there and you will see Jesus. He took the curse of sin for us. Mm. I'm kind of curious at this. <laughs> yep. Jesus took the curse of sin for us. But it says, but, but, that seems like something different from what is stated in verse 18. It says, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, mm -hmm. lest ye make yourselves accursed. Which we define a curse as everything that was in the city from verse 17. But it also was a tide because it said it belonged to the Lord. Was to be consecrated, yes. Sir. So what happened? It, you know, it's I mean it's you know it's mind-boggling, but here God was saying, Look, these are cursed strings, yes, but I will make them pure is the money that we work accursed is it that though ryan are you saw where akon's heart was because this, this is idol worship you know and all these gold this silver that mm. was the issue right it's where his heart was so that's why it was a curse and he brought the curse upon himself because he revealed where his heart truly was. Well, I wouldn't say that was because that is why it was a curse. It was a curse because of verse 17. The Lord says, The city shall be a curse, and all that are in it. So there, there's two things here, right? Mm -hmm. the, the city has been a curse, but God is saying that, you know what? I have taken this accursed thing, right? Give me this accursed thing. So there is, there is a curse and there's also a blessing. So God can take the accursed you produce it as a blessing? That's what you're saying? Yes. Interesting. So God can take a sinner mm -hmm. and use him and call him and for the Lord. A blessing. Use. Yes. And, so, that, and that's, that, and that's this, what Jesus does. He takes us as sinners. The accursed. Right? Okay. In fact, he put, he takes 
and the the curse of sin. Mercy. I see it. I see the picture. I see the picture. You see it. Look at the picture. Oh Lord, the Lord just reveal it. Psalm nineteen. Psalm nineteen. Okay. Psalm nineteen. It says. More to be desired are they than gold, ye much fine gold, sweeter than the honeycomb. Uh, There's another text that talks about God refining us as gold. In other words, what I'm seeing from Joshua here, we have been, you are in sin, a curse. A curse means to be put to death. Something that of death marked on it. But here he is showing that he can take the curse and declare in verse 19. The but curse how can no, he take it? But how all, can he take it? Eh? Here in the in the chapter, how did he take it? What was he to take it? It had to be yielded up, yielded up to him. And Achan did not yield it up to him. Mm -hmm. Achan took it on to himself. So if, if we don't yield up sin, if we continue to live in sin, then we are cursed. Mm -hmm. Because God is saying, heal it up to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. That he can take be consecrated. He can take the curse. Be, mm -hmm. Yes, be consecrated. But we want to take it on. We want to keep it. Because mm -hmm. in it we see treasure. Mm -hmm. So the accursed thing could not become a blessing unless it goes into it. the treasury of the Lord. Yes. So we... Unless it was yielded up to the treasury of the Lord. In other words, when we become Christians, we have entered into the treasury of the Lord. Yes. We are now... For holy use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, royal, a royal priesthood. Yes. So do you see how everything ties in? It's still a gospel, man. <laughs> so it That's the gospel. The thing, if we present the accursed thing, it can be transformed as silver and gold. Only through Jesus. The treasure of the Lord. Mm hmm it's not even termed as a curse when it comes in treasure of the Lord again. It no. is termed as silver and gold. Amen. God wants us, and, and, and I was trying to find a text, but there are a few texts in the Bible that shows you that when trials, when we go through trials, we shall be tried as gold. And if anybody has... Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, course. I'm tough. Uh, Revelation says, buy of me gold, tried. First Peter 1 verse 7 says, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold, though it be Tried with fire. See that? First Peter 1 verse 7. Job even talks about it. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And that is where you want us to put our minds, that we, if we put our life into God's hands, 
Don't be afraid of the trials. Because the trials is the converting for, of us from the curse <laughs> into pure gold. And it says here that we might be found. This is the church found. of the Lord. You know, found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That is where he wants to have us. But Achan entered into the camp of God. A curse. Which is death. In other words, he has entered into Remember, now, this is a judgment you know, that has just taken place. The judgment has just taken place on Jericho. Those who survive should now be gold, tried. The accursed things were supposed to have been perished. You see the picture of Morris and Kiri? All the accursed things were supposed to have been destroyed. But he took the accursed thing with him. Hmm. So he's taking sin into the camp. Not only in the camp. In God's executive judgment. It's a lesson. That no accursed thing can survive that judgment. So, it, it, so, so what happened? The city was destroyed. But he made himself an extension of that city. Mm. He made himself an extension of the curse of the city. That's what we do when we enter in the presence of the Lord. Not with the Lord's garment, but he is, has the Babylonian garment. <laughs> Robes of unrighteousness. Robes of unrighteousness. You see that? Remember the parable of the wedding garment? Mm -hmm. Yes, he went into the, they went in the garment and remember the one that was found that didn't have on the garment, what happened to him? He was taken out. Mercy. <laughs> he was taken out. Yes. It's the same picture, you know? Mm -hmm. He was found with a different garment. He's lost in at the Babylonian garment. Are we lusting? Are we coming before God with our own righteousness? Or are we garbed in the righteousness of God? That is the lesson of Achan. And Israel could not have gone forward because he can abide self righteousness in the camp. Do you know that this period, I'm, you know, this period is a type. of the shaking that must take place. God wants to purify the church to do, to enter into Canaan. The church cannot go forward the 
true now. This is where this, this is what God called it the the, the hundred and forty four thousand then. So to speak. It can be numbered in that set with, with sin in the camp. That is the work that God was doing. Purifying the camp. I've never seen another time in, 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 in the Bible where because of one man No, Adam Adam <laughs> Because of one man all the millions in Israel as he said of the millions of Israel, there was but one man who in that solemn hour of, hour of triumph and of is it the time where it was the hour of when is our hour of triumph and of judgment? When when do we approach that hour of judgment and of triumph? It can't be when we are in a church is being justified. This is not when God wants to glorify, He wants to, He wants to sanctify a church into another stage. I'm gonna write a sermon on it. <laughs> there is a, there is a sermon on the on the and it's entitled the goodly babylonian garment come on send to the group man i uh, sent <laughs> to me i'm gonna share it to the group all right then folks you're out of time the enormity of this sin and its terrible results are the lessons of Akon's history Viciousness is an evil of gradual development. Of viciousness. Please let us let us try not to be covetous because covetousness leads us into idolatry. Idolatry. As I said earlier, whenever idolatry is in the camp of Israel, God don't him don't him stop. Him stop. I give a halt. Get rid of it. Have you ever noticed that? Anytime they take a strange God into the camp. No, 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 no. Not that it is that they know all sin enough, but the sin of idolatry is regarded as something that God I don't know if that's other than word it. God will give you the right words. Anything you put before God is is an idol, it's termed as an idol. Anything that one uh, thinks more important, and that can be anything, that is an idol. It refers to Judas, Ananias, and Sapphira. Those names are numbered with Achan. Back of all of these, we have that of Lucifer. All right. All right. Morris, we'll stop in prayer. Okay. Father, once again, we have seen that the workings of thy Holy Spirit through Jericho, 
and through Achan. Help us, Lord, to heed these lessons, especially in the, t in the time that we're living in. We're living in the last days, and these are lessons for us. So whatever we have heard and whatever has been said, help it to be embedded in our hearts that we might become more like thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right. I miss you all. Until tomorrow evening, after four to six. Uh, as much as possible, to share the word that we are now on Facebook. I want to grow the viewing on, on Facebook. Invite your friends, invite persons to read. And let's continue to pray for the program. Good night. Good night.